All right, so next uh, I will you know, talk to you about this AVR microcontroller. Um, so we have been using one of the AVR microcontrollers um, in our labs so far, and uh, that's the process on the Arduino board. Um, there are different kinds of AVR processors on different kinds of Arduino board, uh, but many of them share the same uh, architecture, um, especially instruction set. Although the um, exact number of registers uh, might be different. The memory map might be a little bit different. But let's go through some of the uh, important concepts in these microcontrollers. And in these set of slides, we'll uh, look into the details of these internals of these microcontrollers and uh, show you some examples using assembly language to operate these, uh, to program these microcontrollers. And today I wanna to talk about the IO part. And in later classes, um, we'll look at the timer and interrupt um, that um, in these microcontrollers. Okay, so this is the system architecture. There are several things um, that you um, should uh, look into. Um, well, first of all, this AVR CPU, this is the center of this microcontroller because without it, uh, the processor cannot be programmed, cannot do the computation or any uh, processing task you wanted to do. And then we have program memory and data memory. As we show in this diagram, the program memory and data memory are in separate spaces. So we show one on the left, the other one on the right. Uh, what we really mean here is that this is a separate program memory from the data memory. And in, this is what we call the Harvard architecture, where the memory spaces used to store programs are different from the memory space used to store data. That means you um, will find the programs and data in different set of memory and physically there's in different places. And also when you uh, try to find them using addresses, they are accessed differently. Now this type of design is different from processors like Intel's uh, XD6, um, Xeon or uh, you know, Core i5, 7, all these processors. In these general purpose processors, um, they use so-called von Neumann architecture. In this case, the program and data are in the same memory space. So if I draw a diagram, you will see that this is the uh, Intel's um, i7 microprocessor, and you have one box, that's the memory, which stores both program and data. So that's a major difference between Harvard architecture and versus the von Neumann architecture. Again, this AVR use Harvard architecture. Um, like many microcontrollers, um, for example, from the PIC, from the microchip, PIC microcontroller use also Harvard architecture where the program memory and data memory are separate. So between the CPU and these memory, of course, we fetch instructions from program memory. So all the software, you know, you wrote uh, uh, your programs for lab one, lab two, and later for lab three, after compilation, all the instructions are gonna be stored in this flash. And in contrast, data, data memory are based on SRAM. SRAM is called a volatile memory and flash is called non-volatile. Volatile versus non-volatile depends on whether the memory component retain information after power off or not. So flash 
uh, can return information after you power off this chip or power off this system. Whereas for the Astron, it loses all the data, all the information when you power off this chip. And because we have instructions are stored in the flash, so you don't have to program again. Um, you can just plug it back into a USB cable, your program will run. You don't have to open up the Arduino ID and then run the compilation, run the programming process again. And that's the benefit of using this flash type of memory. And next thing we wanna look at is the IO ports. So the IO ports, IO ports are the, sorry, it's the wrong button. Are the ways for the microprocessor to interface with the outside world. All the things you do with your buttons, with your LED, with the um, uh, joystick and the accelerometer, all these sensors are through these ports. Not necessary to this one, but uh, it'll go through some of the ports. And the way to um, program these ports for read and date, for read or write, is through this IO data bus. Um, and you can send the data out through this IO port if you set the port as output, or you can read data in through this IO port if you set this port as an input port. And so that's bi directional. And we'll see shortly how we set the direction uh, so that we can use the port according to our needs. Um, TC012 are the timers that we will talk about uh, in future classes. Those are the interesting units that you can use to set up specific tasks uh, on a preset schedule. Uh, you'll be able to generate inter interrupts to allow you to perform a uh, predefined task at certain time intervals. Also, there's possibility of doing external interrupt. Um, ADC is for analog to digital conversion. And you have eight analog inputs, and you can use uh, AREF, this pin, as the reference voltage. Then you can perform analog to digital conversion using this ADC component that's built in onto this chip. USART, or sometimes called UART, uh, UART, this is the serial interface. So for the uh, data transfer through the RS-232 um, protocol, you're gonna be using these ports, one for input, one for output. Let's take a closer look at the IO ports. This Etamega 328P has 23 GPIO pins that are grouped into three IO ports. And they are color coded on this diagram. Port B refers to the pins PB um, index from seven to zero. So you have eight bit bi-directional IO pins and they are colored in uh, this uh, type of green. Um, and then similarly, port C has a few pins from six to zero. Uh, it's colored in uh, this light blue. Uh, and then port D, uh, eight bit bi-directional IO and colored in purple. Each pin can be used individually for input to sense an external signal or be set as an output so that you can drive a signal into the external world. So the things you do using buttons, using LED, are all made possible by using these ports. 
And you may recall the you know, instructions or statements you use in your program, C program, how to set that uh, port to be an input and output and how to uh, read or write through that IO pin, through that port. And we're gonna see shortly how we do that using assembly language program. So once you have this chip, uh, and this chip is put onto an Arduino board, and uh, this is the one that I used from last class, um, this Arduino Uno board. The individual pins are um, routed to these um, connectors. And the numbers do not match exactly, uh, but this diagram shows how these different ports map to the um, pin numbers on the socket, so on these two sockets. And some are labeled as analog, for example, from A0 to A5. And these other ones are marked as digital. There are 14 digital pins numbered from 0 to 13. They can be used for digital input or output. And pin 0 and 1 are also connected to the USB port. There are six analog pins labeled as A0 to A5, but in fact, they map to um, port C uh, from PC0 to PC5. And those are analog input signals. So from this map, you can see that the, from the processor point of view, it names or it assigns the uh, pins as PB1, PB2, all these port names. And these pins can eventually be connected, or routed to these connectors, and you can label them using different numbers. For the Atomega 2560, it's a larger board and uses a different processor, still from the same AVR family, uh, but the pin numbers will be different and the connector numbers will be also different. But the way to use them are very similar. So they have um, pins grouped in ports uh, for either analog or digital uh, purpose. And then uh, you can configure them, you can connect them individually. AVR has three bit, three A bit registers to access the pins of a port. Um, and for each port, you find such three registers. DDR is data direction register. Uh, it configures the bi-directional pins for input or output. Uh, if you set a zero, that means the input. Uh, if you set to one, that means that particular pin is the output. Now note that these zero ones uh, for input or output can be different from processor to processor or from microcontroller to microcontroller. Um, for example, in PIC, PIC microcontrollers, they use one for input, zero for output, uh, which I think is more intuitive uh, because one, that's a, you know, I, and zero, that's O. But you want to just make sure that you understand um, you want to make sure that you understand clearly what value represents input, what value represents output. The second register is the port register. It refers to port data. Uh, it stores the bits driven to the external world if the pin direction is configured for output. On the other hand, we have a port input register or PIN. This is for uh, reading values uh, as a digital inputs from the external. So store the digital external pin voltages and it's read if the pin direction is configured for input. So for example, we have a port B. For this port B, we have the corresponding three registers. So we have DDRB, port B, and pin B. 
and we have these uh, eight bits in each of these registers. And for bit n controls pin and bit pbn. So for example, if I um, you know, focus on bit zero, so this DDR B zero, this value here will determine for PB zero pin, am I setting it as an input or output? So if the value here on this bit is a zero, uh, am I setting this PB zero as an input or output? Uh, it would be uh, input. Yeah, so it's an input because zero indicates that I would like to use this particular bit and I zero, so PB zero as a input. That also means uh, we actually do not use port B zero anymore because port B zero is for outputting the data. So we're gonna be using PIN B zero. This is the input register. So I set zero on DDR B zero, then I'm gonna read the actual input value from this uh, bit zero of this PIN B register. So if I read a zero here, does that mean I have a, um, High voltage VDD or a zero volt? If I read a zero from this bit, what will be the voltage that's connected to that PB zero pin? Zero volts? Yeah, that would be a zero volt because that's that value that I read indicates the external. Uh, value applied to that pin. Now, if I make a different case, uh, let's say I set DDR B0 as one, um, that means I want to use this PB0 pin as an output pin and I send value out through this pin. And then I will use port B0 rather than as a PI and B0, because this is for input, I'm gonna using this one as the way to send out a value um, through this PB0 pin. So if I set uh, one here, okay, in this case, I have um, one here to indicate it's output, and I have a one here uh, in this, um, on this, zero bit, what will be the voltage that you can observe on PB zero pin? Or in other words, uh, anyway, if I connect the anode of the LED to this pin, uh, will that LED be turned on? Well, the answer is yes, because if I set one on port B zero, um, this is to say that I want to drive a VDD on that port, on that pin. Um, so if I uh, connect the anode uh, of uh, LED and that LED will be turned on. Okay, so this is how we use uh, three registers for each port to control the direction of the transfer and also set up the uh, output value or read the input value from the registers. And this is a very um, typical pattern uh, that people um, use to uh, in different microcontrollers. Um, in PIC pick and controller, they have you know, exactly the, the same design um, just the, the names of these registers are a little bit different, but they also have this uh, direction register to control the direction and one 
register to for output, the other register for input. So it's um it's important that you um, understand this. Okay, next thing is about data memory map. Um, SRAM is treated as a, a part of the larger data memory address space. Um, the data memory map defines the data addresses of all storage elements. Uh, again, note here that program memory is separate. Um, it's, uh, it follows the Harvard architecture. So the program memory and data memory are in two, two separate memory spaces. So all things you see here are not related to program instructions at all. Um, what we have here is a, um, the data memory. Um, we have 32 general purpose registers. Uh, each of them is eight bit. And we have 64 IO registers. And we have 160 external IO registers uh, mapped in this space. And then we have the internal SRAM on uh, two kilobytes. So what you see on the left side is so-called the load store address. Load store address are uh, from zero to all the way eight uh, FF. Um, so if you use load or store instructions like this one, or store instructions, um, these instructions will assume that you are talking about these addresses. And you can access any of these information using these addresses and provided that they are mapped properly to these different spaces. So you can load um, any values uh, from the gen general purpose registers or store the value into the registers using addresses from zero to one F. Uh, or you can say I wanna store uh, something at uh, address 104 in hexadecimal and that will put a value here. So the load store address will assume that you are talking about this address space. And in different parts of the memory space, it's mapped to different things. Between these space, it's mapped to an SRAM. Um, between you know, these things, it's mapped to general purpose registers. And between 20 and 5F, uh, these are mapped to the 64 IO registers. And also uh, there's a, you know, some, um, other um, registers reserved in this range. For 64 IO registers here, um, these registers um, not only have these uh, load store addresses, they also have IO addresses. You can use IO instructions to access these IO registers. But in that case, you need to use this memory, sorry, this address range from zero to three F. If you use three F as part of your IO instruction, using in or out to access these addresses, let's say three F is the address you access. That's the same as you use five F with this load store instruction. And when you use 5F, those are treated um, as memory address. So they are gonna be mapped to this location. And that's the same as the 3F when you use IO address. So this is you know, a very interesting example that shows you the address space, the addresses, and how that relates to instructions. You should not treat these numbers literally because these memory ranges could be different, uh, different processor. But the idea of mapping one resource, this being the case IO registers to either uh, load store address or IO address. Um, this is interesting to know and also to understand um, 
the possible ways to access the, um, the same resource. Um, so it's, it, you know, I recommend that you um, take a look at this closely, uh, understand it. So earlier we talked about the registers for a particular port. We use the example for port B. So we have the uh, data transfer direction. We have the PIN for input and port B for output. These IO, these registers corresponding to port B, they are IO registers. And they are mapped to 03 for this case, for this particular register in the IO address space. And then 04 for DBRB and 05 for port B. So if I go back to um, the previous diagram, so we are talking about registers here for that address, 03, 04, and 05. So that's somewhere here, okay? Now you can use IO instructions to access them, but if you want to use load store instructions, to access them as memory locations, you can do that. But in that case, you need to add this 20 because it's 20 corresponding to the zero. And so 21 corresponding to zero one and 23 corresponding to zero three. Then that zero three is PINB and zero four is this DDRB. So that's why we have this simple translation formula, uh, the load store address equals the IO address plus 20. The following few lines uh, shows you the, um, how you can program the pins. Um, like we said earlier, you, let's say you want N as the pin index, N could be zero or two uh, through up to seven. In the pin configuration, you can set bit n to zero if you want to use that pin for input or set it to one if you want to use it for output. If you read pin, um, if you set it as an input, you will read the PIN register. And in our case, we're going to be reading PINB, read one byte, and then mask bit position n. Because when you read from this register, you are reading eight bits from it. And you only um, use one of the bit at location N. So you want to get rid of other uh, bits to mask other bits out, or just remain, um, retain this uh, only bit in position N. For writing, well, for output, you can write the output B value to bit N of the port register. In our example, we'll write that to port B. So you can set um, your um, output voltage on that particular pin to be zero or VDB. Okay, so let's put them into action we have a very simple design. Um, it's probably part of your lab one. What we wanna do here is we want to use one of the pins, that's pin 12 on the Arduino board, on the Uno board, to detect the push button position. Uh, so the push button could be closed, could be open. So that's what we want to detect. Uh, the, the circuit is very simple. Uh, we have the push button. Um, one side is connected to the five volt VDD and the other end is connected to uh, the um, pin 12 on the connector. And also we have a current limiting resistor 
um, so that we don't have we we don't short the um, circuit when we press the button. Now pin twelve on the Uno board is wired to pin PB four of this microcontroller. So we're really talking about bit number four of port B. So all the things we do for this design, we should um, deal with PB4 um, for um, this operation. So first thing we need, to, we need to do is to configure bit four in DDRB so that that pin will be used as an input. And then once we have that configured, we can read the port register P, I, and B and extract the bit from it. And we only look at bit number four or index number four. Okay, so that's what we're gonna have. Um, if you write a C program like you did, uh, you can use the uh, Arduino libraries built-in um, functions. But here we want to show you underneath what happened. So when you are called, uh, set the pin mode, you know, uh, read the, the, the value from the, from the port. Uh, underneath, this is what we'll have uh, in terms of assembly language instructions. First of all, we will clear R1. R1 uh, is one of the general purpose registers. We will just assign zero to this register. And then the next instruction is a out instruction, 0x04, zero zero so hexadecimal four and R1. Now we're using an out instruction out and in instructions are IO instructions. So when you use IO instructions, we use IO addresses. So let's go back quickly to see what is 04. When you have IO address 04, that refers to this register, DDRB. So we're gonna assign a value to this DDRB and the value is zero. So essentially we um, put zero to this DDRB. DDRB has eight bits. So all the eight bits are zero now, including bit index number four. And that did exactly what we want. We configured PB4 as an input because we now have a zero on the um, bit four of DDRB. The next instruction is to read value from P, I, and B. The reason we know we're reading from P, I, and B is because of this address, 03, and that's the IO address for that register. So we're gonna read value from this P, I, and B and put the value into another general purpose register that's R16. And we can do this safely because we already configured the pin as a input. So we'll be able to read uh, you know, up to eight bits to this register, including the value on bit number four. Now the next instruction is the AND instruction. If you AND, um, so you're gonna be doing a logic bitwise AND operation between R16 and this hexadecimal value one zero. Hexadecimal value one zero, that is, you know, you have a one on bit number four and all the bits are zeros. So when you end this, you basically mask out all the other bits except bit number four. So up to this point, you will have the value uh, on bit number four uh, stored in the result register that's R16. The next thing you can do is to check the value. Um, you can do a lot of different ways. You can shift the value to the very end, or you can just compare with the known um, value here. Um, 
but essentially with these four instructions, you set the direction of the port and then you are able to read the value from the input register and then uh, mask out the unnecessary or unused bit to just keep the value that you are interested. Uh, it's very simple. Um, it's, uh, you know, it just shows you exactly what happens when you have these set pin mode um, API calls and uh, you read the values in your C program. Uh, if you are interested, you can use a uh, simulation tool, a debugger uh, for AVR processors. Um, you can download that from the um, Arduino from AVR website. Uh, um, then try a few commands, but I won't go into that. Essentially, this um, shows you what's the actual content um, in those registers. When you actually run this program, Uh, a few other assembly entry instructions related to bit operations. Um, set B A comma N is to set bit number N of the port register and address. So this will you need to provide address like 03, 04 that we used earlier, and that's the I/O address. And you can use this to set the bit um, number uh, index N of that register. Set means assign one uh, to that location, bit location N. And on the other hand, you can clear the bit. So CBI is to clear uh, bit N of port register and IO address. And there are several um, instructions like this. Skip next instruction if bit N of port register and IO address is set. Um, so this instruction is short, but what it does, it's kind of uh, long, uh, to explain, um, it does a few things. It will compare uh, the value at bit location n of the port register specified using this IO address. It will check if that bit is set or not. For example, in the earlier case, you have the button. Uh, if you press the button, um, you'll be reading one on a particular bit. So if you do this uh, instruction, right after you get the value, you will skip the next instruction. So it's like a branch, a branch instruction, like if an, if an else instruction. SBIC uh, is the opposite. It will skip the next instruction if uh, the bit is cleared. That means if that bit has a zero. Okay, um, so what we had earlier, let's see. Remember that we read the value uh, from this PIMB register put into R16. Uh, we can also, uh, instead of reading the value into a general purpose register, we can uh, just check the value on that bit. Uh, what we do here is we are supplying the address of the PIN um, B register, that's 03. And then we say, let's check the bit number four because that's the bit that we use to read the button status. So we'll, we'll check that bit. Uh, if this bit is, is set, that means if this PIN B4 is one, we're gonna skip the next instruction. So we're gonna skip this. If it's set, we're gonna skip this instruction. Um, that means we're gonna execute this instruction instead. And what this does is to set bi uh, 0x05 comma five, that is to uh, set bit number five of this port B uh, to be one. And then we're gonna jump to here or jump done, so I'm gonna skip this one. Um, so that's the case if we have bit number four on this PMV is uh, set to one. 
um, if it's not set one, if it's clear, then we will not jump, we will not skip this next instruction. We will execute this instruction. So it will take this instruction, jump to L, ALT. That's going to be here. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear bit number five in port B register. Okay, so this is a, how we do if then else uh, for this uh, simple case. 